In this video, I'm going to show you a few professional video editing techniques using iMovie's Precision Editor. Hey, it's Mike with more tips and tutorials to help you create great video for your YouTube channel, your video marketing, or online courses. Thank you so much for being here. You know, iMovie may seem like amateur, bare-bones video editing software, but iMovie actually contains features you'd find in more sophisticated, professional video editing applications. One of those features is the Precision Editor. And as the name suggests, it helps you make more precise edits. But it also allows you to use more professional level video editing techniques in your videos. Let's hop into iMovie so I can show you what I mean. So here we are in iMovie. This is iMovie 10.1.11 running on Mac OS 10.14.4. So I have this project open with several clips in the timeline I'm going to use to demonstrate the Precision Editor. So let's start with these two clips here. So I have these two shots I want to cut together. The first shot is a wide shot showing me plugging a USB microphone into a laptop. The second shot is a close up of the USB plug going into the laptop. So I want to make an edit that will continue the action from the wide shot to the close up called a continuity cut. Now with continuity cuts, best practice is to cut on action meaning you want to make your edit somewhere in the middle of the action as opposed to before the action starts or after the action ends. Cutting on action makes the edit flow more smoothly. In this case, the main action is me plugging in the USB cable. So I want to make my cut somewhere during that action. Now I can try to make the edit by adjusting the end of the outgoing clip and the beginning of the incoming clip. Eventually, I'll get what I want but there's a way to have finer control over this edit here in iMovie. And that is the Precision Editor. You can open the Precision Editor two ways. The first way is to select the left or right edge of a clip at the point of the edit you want to adjust. Then go up to the top menu and under Window, select Show Precision Editor. The second way, which is the way I like to do it, is to place your mouse over the edit point between the two clips and double click and up pops the Precision Editor. To close the Precision Editor, you just click the X beside Close Precision Editor or hit the Return key or just click off into an empty area. I'll open the Precision Editor again. Now the Precision Editor can look a bit confusing at first, but it's really simple. When you open the Precision Editor to adjust an edit between clips, it places the outgoing clip and all the clips before it on a track at the top of the Precision Editor, and the incoming clip and all the clips after it on a track below the other track. Let's take a look at what else is going on here. This gray vertical line going through the two clips is the actual edit point, where the outgoing clip ends and the incoming clip begins. This dim area of the outgoing clip is the unused part of the clip. Same with the incoming clip down here. This dim area is the unused part of the incoming clip. As you can see, even though these parts are unused in the timeline, I can still skim across to see what's there, which can help me make my edit. All right, there are essentially three things you can do here in the Precision Editor to help you make an edit. First, you can move the edit point itself, called rolling the edit, by placing your mouse in this darker center channel here between the vertical gray edit lines, clicking and dragging. The second thing you can do is adjust where you want the outgoing clip to end, its out point, by clicking and dragging on its gray vertical edit line. You can also adjust the out point by clicking and dragging the clip itself. The third thing you can do is adjust where you want the incoming clip to start, its in point, by clicking and dragging its gray vertical edit line, or clicking and dragging the clip. To play back your edit as you make your adjustments, drag to a spot before the edit, then hit the space bar to play back. If you place your cursor on a clip, you get this red scrubber line. When you hit play, you'll only be playing back that particular clip, just so you know, because knowing is half the battle. So by using these three different adjustments, you can really fine tune your edit. 
I'm going to place my mouse in the center channel between the gray edit lines again and click. Notice how this square with the dot in the middle turned yellow? That square or dot represents the edit point between these two clips. So looking down the rest of the precision editor, you can see multiple squares. Those are all edit points in the timeline. So if you want to select a different edit point in the timeline to adjust while you're in the precision editor, click one of these squares. I'm going to click the square between these two clips here. And now I can work on this edit. But you'll notice things look a little different here. That's because there is a transition at the edit point between these two clips. In this case, a cross dissolve. Now there are a few things you can do with a transition in the precision editor. You can shorten or lengthen the duration of a transition by clicking and dragging on either end of this transition bar. You can change where the transition happens between the two clips by clicking and dragging on the center of the transition bar. You can also adjust where you want the transition to start on the outgoing clip by clicking and dragging either one of its gray vertical edit lines. You can also adjust where the transition starts in the outgoing clip by clicking and dragging the clip itself. I can adjust the transition's timing the same way on the incoming clip down here, clicking and dragging its gray vertical edit lines, or clicking and dragging the clip itself. All right, now I'm going to show you a professional video editing technique using the Precision Editor. It's a technique you've seen in movies, TV series, documentaries, even my videos if you paid attention. The technique is called Split Edits, and you'll understand why it's called Split in just a moment. To demonstrate Split Edits, I'm going to use these three clips at the end of the timeline here. I'll play them real quick. I've got a jet landing an ambulance racing somewhere, and an extreme close-up of bacon frying. I'm going to work on the edit between the jet and the ambulance shots first, so I'll place my cursor at the edit point between these two clips and double-click to bring up the precision editor. Okay, the first type of split edit I'm going to show you is an audio advance. So with these particular clips, I want to start hearing the ambulance siren in this incoming shot before the jet shot, the outgoing shot, ends. So I want to hear the ambulance siren in advance of the shot appearing on screen, hence the name Audio Advance. The first thing I'm going to do is click and drag the incoming clip, the ambulance shot, to the left so I can get some overlap with the outgoing clip of the jet before the edit point. Now, this overlapping portion of the ambulance clip before the edit point won't play because it's dimmed. Let me show you. Now, here's the trick. If you look closely, you'll see that below the gray vertical edit line for the ambulance clip, there is another shorter gray vertical edit line. This is the edit line for the audio track of the ambulance clip. Now, if you're not seeing this audio track with the waveform, go up to Settings, and beside Audio, make sure Show Waveforms is checked. All right, back to the edit. So what I'm going to do here is click and drag the audio edit line of the ambulance clip to the left to undim the rest of the audio track, which enables it. Let's play this edit now. We can hear the ambulance siren starting underneath the shot of the jet landing. So using the precision editor, we split the timing of the video and audio of the incoming ambulance clip so that its audio started in advance of its video appearing. This is an audio advance split edit, also known as a J-cut because the shape of the incoming clip's audio and video tracks kind of forms the letter J. Now I'm just going to smooth the edit a little bit by fading out the audio of the landing jet clip. To do that, I'll add a couple of audio keyframes to the audio level. 
by hovering over the level line until I get this arrow symbol. Then I'll hold down the option key until I get this arrow with the little plus diamond and click to create a keyframe. I'll add another one near the end here and then drag it down to bring the volume all the way down to fade out the audio. Let's play this. Let's say you don't like this J cut you made and you want to restore this dimmed part of the ambulance clip down here. Well, you just click and drag the video edit line back to the left. Well, that doesn't work. The edit line is locked. So how do you bring back the rest of the clip? Well, you first need to click and drag the audio edit line back to the video edit line to reunite them. Then you can click and drag the video edit line to restore the rest of the clip. All right, the second type of split edit I'm going to show you is essentially the opposite of a J-cut. It's called an L-cut. And I'm going to make an L-cut between the ambulance shot and the frying bacon shot. So I'll click on the edit point between the two shots to bring them up in the precision editor. Then I'm going to click and drag the edit line of the ambulance shot to the left a bit to trim it. But I'll go down to its audio edit line and click and drag it back all the way to the right so it's not dimmed. Do you see the L shape in the clip? Let's have a listen. With an L cut, the audio from the outgoing clip trails off underneath the incoming clip. L cuts and J cuts are professional editing techniques that will help make your videos feel smooth and seamless. And these pro-level split edits are easy to make using iMovie's Precision Editor. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you found value in it. I certainly enjoyed putting it together for you. And if you're looking for more tips and tutorials for creating video, then have a look at the other videos on my channel. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell icon so you don't miss a thing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.